Right, thanks, Michael. <clears throat> Well, as Michael mentioned, we did have more than 70 companies involved who contributed to the to this uh, commission. And as you can imagine, we had literally hundreds of ideas that uh, were, were put on the table, and and uh, we uh, the team did a an, just an absolutely outstanding job of sorting through those those uh, ideas, those uh, suggestions, and bucketing them, as Michael said, into four areas: trust, transnational data flows, transparency, and transformation. Um, we identified 14 specific recommendations uh, to help government uh, work collaboratively, collaboratively with industry, academia, and other nations uh, to support cloud development, innovation, and growth, and ultimately to deploy it effectively uh, on behalf of the U.S. government to make it the government operate cheaper, smarter, and work better. Uh, Dan Reed and I are going to uh, tag team the recommendations specifically a bit, and I'll take the uh, the uh, first couple that are in the uh, theme thematic area of trust. And you notice that uh, the concept we use here is trust. Uh, there's an awful lot of discussion and talk about security. But we, the Commission felt very strongly uh, that the whole concept of uh, implementing cloud is all is so about something much broader than security. It's about trust. Uh, it's absolutely essential as a first step in accelerating cloud adoption and driving U.S. leadership in cloud innovation that the cloud earn the trust of its users. They have to be confident in the security, the privacy, and the availability of service through the cloud. That will require uh, a combination of factors that include things like transparency of practices, accountability, redundancy, access and connectivity, as well as many others. Trust is essential to cloud adoption and essential to U.S. leadership. And we cannot allow questions or perceptions about trust to hinder or provide excuses to prevent moving to the cloud. So our first recommendation in this area is for enabling, for enabling trust is developing and implementing security and assurance frameworks. Government and industry need to work together to develop and implement international standardized frameworks for securing, assessing, certifying, and accrediting cloud solutions. We recommend that cloud computing service providers collaborate with the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, relevant associations and standard bodies around the world to assess and evolve current best practices, standards, metrics, and information sharing to collaboratively deliver a higher level of transparency and trust to consumers and users. Our second recommend recommendation involves identity management. Secure identities are critical to enable user trust in the cloud. We need to accelerate development of private sector-led identity management ecosystem as envisioned by the National Strategy for Trusted Identities in Cyberspace. This ecosystem should facilitate the adoption of strong authentication technologies and enable users to gain secure access to cloud services and websites. Now let me turn it over to Dan for the second set of recommendations related to trust. Thanks, Jim. Let me uh, also offer my thanks to my colleagues uh, uh, on the podium here and also all the other commissioners involved. Um, as Mike noted, uh, it really was a pleasure to work together to produce this, this report. You know, one of the reasons we're here is because we're excited about the power of the cloud as, as a transformative force, both for government uh, and for industry, the ability to create nimble services, uh, to operate efficiently, uh, and to create uh, and continue to enable uh, economic competitiveness uh, for the U.S. Uh, as Jim said, I want to pick up on, on the trust recommendations uh, and continue in the spirit that he said, because trust really is, if you think about it, the foundation of our society. Uh, and all of the mechanisms and, and processes uh, that it supports. That includes security, but it's more than that. It's confidence that the information that you need will be protected and safe, and also it's privacy, and as Jim said, it's availability. Uh, so in that spirit, recommendation three about responses to data breaches is a government should enact a national data breach law to clarify breach notification responsibilities and commitments of companies to the customers and also update and strengthen criminal laws against those who attack computer systems and networks, including cloud computing systems. And if you think about that famous saying of Willie Sutton, the bank robber, about why he robbed banks, that that's where the money was, uh, the reason why it's important that we think about IT security and trust in the broad sense is because that's where the data and services are. And so it's important that as inevitable targets of malicious actors 
that we work together to define appropriate security responses uh, to respond in kind just as banks provide security. And so in the spirit of recommending enactment of a national data breach law to clarify notifications, it really is in the spirit of what Jim said before, that timely information drives out fear uh, and it catalyzes rapid responses. In addition, uh, the other aspect of the recommendation is, is really that those laws governing punishment of those attack computer systems and networks need to be updated to reflect technological advances. And you'll see that theme recur as we talk about subsequent recommendations. The longer term perspective is related to recommendation four about research, uh, namely that government, industry, and academia should develop and execute a joint cloud computing research agenda. The benefits that are accruing today from the cloud services that we see now draw on research that was conducted over a period of many years by both the public and the private sector. And it's important that we continue to sustain that investment to drive those innovations forward. And it means a balance between the short and medium term research uh, and the practical investments that accrue from industry uh, and the government research investment and the broad set of issues uh, around all aspects of clouds, including security and privacy, to drive those longer-term agendas forward and create those future advantages. The second of the broad areas uh, that the report touches on are issues around transnational data flows. And if one thinks about data, uh, it flows like water. Uh, it crosses international, national, and jurisdictional boundaries with ease. Uh, and in the Internet age, information rarely has a single physical location and duplication and sharing can occur very quickly uh, and very easily. We also know that different countries, different cultures, and different generations have diverse expectations around the concepts of privacy and security. And that really brings us to recommendation five, that the U.S. government and industry should promote a comprehensive, technology-neutral privacy framework consistent with commonly accepted privacy and data protection principles based on frameworks such as the OECD principles uh, and the APEC privacy frameworks. Many of our U.S. laws tend to be sector specific. Think about healthcare privacy, for example, or state specific and rationalize, rationalizing that process at a national level uh, to drive discussion internationally about the international and transnational flow of data, particularly in Europe, is important. U.S. industry and government need to work together to promote comprehensive privacy frameworks if we're going to resolve those differing perspectives uh, and ensure that U.S. companies can be successful uh, in the international market. Recommendation six about government law enforcement access to data uh, recommends that the U.S. government should demonstrate leadership in identifying and implementing mechanisms for lawful access by law enforcement or government to data stored in the cloud. And I hark back to something I said before about the rate of technical change and the need to rationalize and update uh, many of our regulatory processes. If you think about time scales, 25 years is an eternity in the information age. Uh, and yet the Electronic Communications and Privacy Act, ECPA, was enacted in 1986. And so as we think about the rate of change and its implications, uh, we need to think about how we update those to reflect the realities of the need for law enforcement to gain legitimate access to digital information um, when many of the laws we currently operate under were written when PCs were rare and cell phones were unknown. Uh, in addition, the ongoing dialogue that the State Department and other agencies are engaged in uh, in driving discussions around processes for legitimate law enforcement access to government data internationally, we commend those activities and recommend that they continue. Related to, to the previous recommendation, Recommendation 7, uh, e-discovery and forensics, government and industry should enable effective practices for collecting information from the cloud to meet forensic or e-discovery needs in ways that fully support legal due process while minimizing as, uh, impact on cloud provider operations. The scale and scope at which cloud data centers operate, often involving tens or hundreds of thousands of servers, hosting a diverse set of workloads and, and disjoint activities, means that it's important that one provide timely response to those legitimate needs 
but also not disrupt other activities uh, that are unrelated to those that are the target of inquiry. And so rationalizing that process is an important aspect. Uh, and we encourage that activity to continue, particularly because cloud services shift some of the responsibilities for data management from the customer to the provider. And so rationalizing that engagement between government and industry to define those mechanisms is critical. Recommendation eight uh, is that the U.S. government should lead by example, that it should demonstrate its willingness to trust cloud computing environments in other countries for appropriate government workloads. We all know that trust and security depend on many factors. Physical location is just one of many. Like shoes, one size does not fit all. Uh, and it's important that as we think about the services and data that can be hosted in different contexts that we understand and clearly enunciate the security and privacy expectations that are commensurate with those and be able to place those data and services accordingly. If we want other governments to host their data and services operated by U.S. companies uh, and in international data centers, we in the U.S. must demonstrate appropriate willingness to do the same. The next topic relates to transparency. Uh, as I said before, one of the things that was really clear in our conversations that occurred over and over again was the notion that knowledge and information drive out fear. The transparency by cloud providers will accelerate the shift to the cloud by addressing many of the primary reasons, in particular that federal agencies and companies don't move to the cloud, namely uncertainty about how systems not in their possession uh, um, may be managed uh, and fear of being unable to access or move their data. And so recommendation nine related to transparency is that industries should publicly disclose information about relevant operational aspects of their cloud services, including portability, interoperability, security, certifications, performance, and reliability. Industry and government should support development of metrics designed to meet the needs of diverse and different user groups, and these metrics should be developed in an open and transparent environment, taking into account the global nature of cloud use. The transition to cloud shifts some of the responsibilities from individual companies and historical providers of services to cloud providers. And to make that work, this partnership work, it's really important that that transparency be clear, that there be mechanisms for the consumers of those services to verify the attributes of the services being operated. Which really brings me to recommendation 10, that of data portability. The cloud providers should enable portability of user data through documents, tools, and support for agreed upon industry standards and best practices. If you've ever looked at your cassette tapes or, or VHS movies and wondered about how you migrate them, then you understand data portability that exists at scale in the cloud. Uh, and because cloud data is not stored in individual users' possession, uh, we really need for cloud providers to commit to support for enabling portability and movement of data by extensions of best practices and standards associated with that. And with that, let me turn it back to Jim uh, to pick up the rest of the recommendations. Thanks, Dan. Uh, the fourth thematic area is transformation. Cloud computing is a disruptive technology. While it offers benefits to adopters, it also poses challenges to federal agencies and commercial organizations that are trying to adapt to the technological changes that are ushered in by the cloud. Many of the companies represented on the commission are deeply involved with the federal government in the Cloud First initiatives and the Cloud First strategy in trying to bring cloud computing to government. To realize its benefits, government industry both need to be open to re-envisioning the role of IT and how it's bought and how it's sold. So in this area are four recommendations. The first two are aimed specifically at actions that the federal government can take to facilitate transition to the cloud and remove impediments. By stepping forward as a leader in the adoption of cloud, the government can play a key role in driving innovation, economic growth in the IT industry, and demonstrate that it considers the cloud an important, effective, safe, and secure environment. The final two recommendations focus on transformation and infrastructure in the workforce necessary for widespread cloud adoption. So recommendation number 11 involves federal acquisition and budgeting. Uh, 
We believe that agencies need to demonstrate flexibility in adapting procurement models for cloud services, and that Congress and OMB should be open to changing the budget models for the acquisitions of cloud services. We conducted a number of interviews, and we rarely found any government official who uh, argued that major changes were needed to the federal acquisition regulations. Uh, generally speaking, what was needed is to use the flexibility afforded by the federal acquisition regulations to buy in the as-a-service model. The FAR is flexible enough to allow agencies to acquire as a service. However, acquisition officials need to be educated and understand how to take advantage of the flexibility afforded in the FAR. The second recommendation is that the government needs to establish policies and processes and provide fiscal incentives and rewards and support for agencies as they take steps into the cloud. We all know that people will respond to economic incentives, and in government, it's all about the budget. Adopting new technology can be difficult, and its transition to the cloud will require investment of time, resources, and motivation. And to the extent that incentives can be, financial incentives can be provided, provided to, to do that, we'll move faster. We further recommend infrastructure improvement. Government industry need to understand and embrace the modernization of the broadband infrastructure and the current move to IPv6 to improve the bandwidth and reliability, reliable connectivity that are necessary for the growth of cloud services throughout the United States. And finally, we move on to education and training. We recommend that government industry and academia cooperate to develop and distribute the educational resources for major stakeholder communities on the technical, business, and policy issues related to acquisition, deployment, and operation of cloud services. Transitioning the cloud required new capabilities for business and agency leaders, acquisition, and IT workforces. We believe the necessary education programs can be delivered through existing resources within government, industry, and academia. A GSA-enabled cloud educational portal, new academic courses for the IT workforce, informal outreach networks among government, industry, and academic community. All these education, educational and training suggestions and more should be relatively expedient and easy to deploy. So that, that brings us back again to the buyer's guide. You notice in the, in the 14 recommend, recommendations we've made, what we've, what we've left out are a lot of very specific ideas and actions that we believe the federal uh, government can take uh, to more rapidly move to the cloud and re remove the impediments that uh, prevent rapid adoption of the cloud. And we'd like to urge you all to take advantage of the website and go look specifically at that buyer's guide, which are embedded the collective experience of 70 or more companies in uh, selling cloud services both to the government and in the commercial enterprise. So with that, let me turn it back over to Michael. And Great. Phil? Phil? Yes. Let me uh, thank again the commission leadership and all the commission.